Welcome to eShikshana. I am Dr. Shilpa, serving as Associate Professor in RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. Today I will be teaching you the Module 2 part of Advanced VLSI course for your 7th semester. So, when you look at the Module 2 part of Advanced VLSI, it appears to be the for planning, placement and routing, which is something new which you have never learnt before. So, in the Module 1 part of uh, this course, Madam might have given you uh, the VLSI design flow, the general VLSI design flow, how it happens, there are two parts, fr front end and the back end part. The back end part we usually call as a physical design uh, part. So, in the six physical design part, there are various stages. The stages begin with the partitioning of the design, then the floor planning, placement and the routing and many more in between and there are many iterations also in between. The floor planning officially being the very first stage of uh, back end design or the physical design is actually tries to give you the overall look of a chip or how logic modules has to be placed on the chip area. The, when I say a chip, an integrated circuit, there is a, spe a specified uh, you know area specification in terms of width and height of a chip will be always given to you. Uh, with respect to that specification, we have to fit in all the operating logical blocks such a way that uh, there should not be any excess of area left uh, in the chip or there should not be any sort of congestion for routing. See, if you look at this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, chip design on a uh, you know surface level, it appears to be there are many communicating nodes like uh, you have a lab, say you have 10 computers, how to interconnect them in a best possible way. So, instead of computers with respect to chip, you have many logical blocks, how to connect them in a best possible way, that is what we are trying to do in the physical design. So, let us uh, shift to the floor planning, what happens in floor planning, what are the inputs needed for the floor planning. So, let me once again uh, uh, brief you about uh, the ASIC design flow. As you know, it starts with system specification. So, this design is for what and this design is designed under which technology. Say when I say technology, we typically believe that technology means it is a wire length. So, it is a mi minimum possible wire length allowed that defines a technology is not exactly equal to the technology, but we can still relate it to a, a channel length. So, when I say channel length, I am speaking about the feature size of a transistor being used to fabricate a particular chip. So, there is a system specification, say you are supposed to design say a processor, for example, a general purpose a processor. So, if it is a, a processor, what and all it will have? It will have a memory unit, it will have a CPU, inside CPU it will have ALU, etc. Right? All these will become a logic specifications. So, these specifications logically or functionally will be given in the very first stage. Next what we will do, see when see you might have uh, had some experience in you know designing a project, you might have taken some mini project or a major project in your course or you might have done some internship. When a teacher or an instructor narrate you what is a project, he will give you as a title, he will not give you the design. So, what is the very first step you do? You try to write a block diagramic picture of a project work, right? You write a block diagram, after that you will uh, start designing uh, every part of the design stage wise, right? First block I will design, then the second block and let me try to interconnect. So, it happens in the same way. When we are to design a chip, initially in the chip what and all should be needed that will be initially planned at the architecture level, say processor, how it should behave, what are the uh, blocks, everything should be given in terms of a block diagram. Inside the block diagram, say ALU, when I am saying for designing ALU, I may be using an adder. So, what type of adder I have to use so that I can match to the specification given, that is the next stage. But ALU is must for that adder is a must, okay. So, architecture level is a design where, say imagine you are designing the entire chip design in the block level for a particular specification. So,
So, specification in terms of area, power requirement, in terms of say delay, all the uh, and the technology, everything becomes a specification. Next, it goes to functional and a logical design. So, block diagram is fixed now. Once a block diagram is fixed, I can go in way deeper into each block. So, each block, say, let me once again take the example of ALU design. Inside that, what I have? I have an adder. So, in the adder, what modification I have to do so that I, it can perform certain arithmetical and logical operations. So, functional part will come into picture. That will be designed. Uh, for designing, you can do design entries either using a hardware description language like you might have heard of uh, very log coding or VSTL. You can go through that digital, I mean digital uh, domain or uh, hardware coding or you can get into the design using you know schematic entry. You might have used CAD and CDA tool where you will have analog uh, environment where you can start designing your own uh, say gates or a functional blocks using MOSFETs. That way also you can perform the design entry. Once a uh, design entry is planned, you can uh, start designing the circuit. Circuit in terms of logical uh, logic gates or it, it could be in terms of transistors as well. Once after that, see this is not just designing every stage, you have to do functional simulations whether it is functionally operating correct according to the specification. Meantime, you are supposed to do even timing analysis, Perform that means the performance analysis like say you are designing for example a NAND gate, the delay in the NAND gate should be limited to 10 nanosecond. That means the design what you are designing that should operate, I mean that should complete its one single operation within 10 nanosecond, that is the meaning. So, all this you should take care while designing the circuit. All these will be simulated now. Once every simulation, if it is verified and when once it is true, then only you can get into the physical design. So, when you look at the transistor, say uh, let me take one N MOSFET. I will uh, try to represent using three terminal notation. I can even represent using four terminal notation body connection I will ignore as of now. So, I have only three connections gate, source and drain. This is the drain, the, this is the N MOSFET, I believe you know how to represent P MOSFET as well. So, when I represent this as a N MOSFET, this is just a symbolic view. In the circuit design, this symbolic view for your design is sufficient, that is only for you. But it does not mean that the entire functionality will be checked for a symbolic view, no. He, there is a hidden hardware present that is no, uh, that is not at the symbol level, that is at the material level, okay. In the physical design, when you look at it, you have say 10 such transistor inter interconnected, how to design it in a particular area of a chip. If you look at the chip, what you have? The base material of a chip is a substrate. If I ignore with respect to chip, if I recollect it with respect to say transistor, then also the base material is a substrate. So, substrate is a base material for the transistor. So, only it is for the chip, correct? So, the base material you have on the base material, you based on uh, the impurity doping, you will uh, you know manage the concentration of charge carriers in the N type and the P type material. The base material what you take is typically of P type. So, if you want to uh, design N MOSFET, you will be doping N materials, N plus material, N plus, plus indicates highly concentrated N materials uh, in a particular region. Uh, uh, it is based on uh, you know uh, fabrication process, you will have a mask based on the mask pattern, we can actually design uh, the circuit at material level. So, in the physical design it is more of a material. So, physical means what? You will get to see where is your transistor, but how can you just arrive at uh, you know material level when I say everything is based on N material and P material, you cannot directly jump on to N materials and the P materials directly. So, you have to perform some optimization process to your function 
because functionality is already checked, your design is freezed, but to transfer that to a material level, you need to perform some op optimization process. For that, the physical design is used. And one more thingy, uh, thing is, say when you say a transistor, and I say uh, using that, uh, though, uh, I mean say n transistors, I will be designing one gate. And gate is giving say 10 nanosecond delay, that is under ideal case. Because I have not used materials so far to construct a NAND gate, I have designed a NAND gate under simulated environment. When I say the materials, it is that a te particular technology is involved. Say for example, if I say N MOSFET under 180 nanometer technology, that means the L is equated to 180 nanometer. Distance between source and drain will be approximately 180 nanometer. So that distance and the charge concentration and all the capa junction capacitance and the length of the interconnects, like you take say wire, wires will be there from gate to source, say you have to. Uh, if you are connecting uh, some, say gate to source, say you have some connection in some of the uh, MOSFETs, random example I am giving. So when you are connecting, you will be using some materials to connect, right. The metal will also add a certain delay when you are connecting. So when it is a physical design and when it is say at, at the front end, both are different scenarios. In the physical design, there will be much more, you know, capacitance is added, resistivity will be increased, material, uh, I mean properties of materials is more important. So you have to once again simulate uh, the entire, uh, you know, functionality check. Meantime, you have to run, uh, you know, timing check as well. So timing before, uh, you know, in the front end may not match to uh, the timing of a back end design or a physical design, but our aim is to match them. So, for that, we have to perform certain optimizations that we are trying to do in the back end design. So, that in the chip area, you know, there will be, be there will be a proper utilization of uh, area. There should not be any uh, vacant space in the chip. Okay. So, we are coming to this. When it is a physical design, very first stage is a partitioning. Anyways, it is not there for uh, your syllabus, but let me brief you. Say imagine you have a microprocessor to be designed as a chip. Say you are given that assignment, all of you may not be able to handle the entire design at one stretch. So you first design say only say adder, you design only the ALU part. Then one of you can design say decoders. Uh, one of you can design say memory, okay. So you partitioned your entire design into pieces so that individually one, each one of you can take up the project, right. So the partitioning is a process where the entire chip will be divided so that sub designs can be designed independent of each other and at the end we can integrate all of them. So that is the principle, okay. Once partitioning is over, once you integrate everything together after optimization, you enter to a phase called chip planning. So chip planning is basically uh, the integration of floor planning plus pin planning. It's a floor planning and the pin planning is integrated together and we call it as a chip planning. Once after chip planning, we will go to placement, then after that you will have a clock routing, power routing, then uh, after that many, uh, you know, post, uh, uh, what to say, routing, simulations, everything. After you complete everything, then only chip will uh, go for, you know, tape out, else it won't. So now let us focus much on the chip planning. So, very first part of it is the floor planning. What is the floor planning? See, when I say the architecture level design, I already introduced you like it is like you have a project and the project you are representing in terms of a block diagram. That block diagram might look something like this. So, this is part of a project, your project and this is a block diagram. 
and all the interconnections are given how they are interconnected all the blocks how they are interconnected so if a partitioning to be analyzed then one fellow will design say d cache another one will uh, design say mm unit okay so partitioning is done now once after that you put everything together now this is the interconnect so from where you get uh, interconnect information interconnect information is there in the front end design you do Verilog coding, then you do synthesize, uh, synthesize your design and you can get RTL netlist. I believe you know what is uh, a netlist or register transfer level design. So from there you will get uh, interconnect information. So interconnects will be based on that initial design. So when you look at this, this is the interconnect. Now I will, I close look at uh, these three blocks. I cache, D cache and the MMU unit. See these three are mutually interconnected, right? Did I touch anything? So I let me look at only three uh, blocks, D cache, I cache and MMU. So if I look at these three, these three are interconnected, right? See if I look at IU and FPU, some uh, functional blocks, okay? See the interconnects are all overlapped. If I want to, you know, actually connect them, there will be, you know, zigzag kind of connections, right? So I, I have to organize them. So what I do, I'll try to move this MMU close to I cache and D cache so that this zigzag connectivity will be eliminated. So in the better way, if I represent the same concept, see where it is placed, MMU is here, which is somewhere close to D cache and I cache. But in turn, I cache is uh, close to decode. I cannot ignore that information. See, everybody is important. So I place decode somewhere here. It's even uh, connected to issue bar ROB. I will place it here. So now there is some sort of compromise between the blocks. They are well uh, arranged so that this kind of you know randomized connection or a zigzag connections or uh, say for example you have connection something like this. In the routing, this kind of connections will not be. Uh, valid. So, if you want to make such connection, so you will take the first line, okay. I am looking at this first line to a horizontal, say, routing region where there is a track. Track is something if you look at, say, PCB, that green color board, you can see all the wires routed. The same thing is called as a track. Even chi inside the ship also, you have similar tracks. So, the, you will take this line to a track, then close the connection and the second line, this line once again you have to take to some other track and close the connection. Routing becomes very complex when you have crisscross or zigzag connections. So I have to improve that. So the improvised design some look like something like this. So this is about the floor planning. Now if I look at the chip planning, it's not just the floor planning. So floor planning will happen only inside this. We say it, it as a IP, sorry, uh, it's as a core, IP core for a particular design, okay. We call it as a core. So the blocks, whatever you can see here is similar to MMU, IU, issue kind of blocks. Now to these, from where the connectivity comes, say you use a microprocessor chip, but it is connected to many, uh, you know, I.O. devices, right, input and output devices. It is connected to some sensors, etc., right. So you should plan for even the interconnections around the chip. So that will be planned in the I.O. padding. All these are the, you know, I.O. pins. This particular chip given in the example has got the pins around the chip. Okay, all these will be planned along with the floor plan, so only it becomes a chip plan. So if you look at only the core placement, where inside the core, what logic block, where to place, why to place, uh, that if you take care, it becomes a floor planning. 
Along with that, if you try to, you know, integrate all the IOs and plan for all the IOs, then it will become a chip planning, okay. So, at the floor planning, now if you look at this, who has given it? If, if you look at it, who has actually given it a, such a beautiful rectangular shape? No design comes in a rectangular shape. You have to give a lot of shape for each logic block in a chip. During floor planning, these shapes may not be allotted for all the blocks. For few of the blocks, these shapes are already predefined. So, that gives us two types of IC designs. One is full custom, full custom. I think in uh, module number one, you might have heard of this word, full custom design. Then you have a semi-custom design. Under semi-custom design, you have standard cell based design and you have gate array based design. If it is a semi-custom design, then there are uh, few blocks, they are already, already pre-characterized. They are ready to be placed. Their shapes cannot be, need not be changed. They are all done with their design, okay. They will be usually placed in the top few layers of a chip. Okay, top few portions of a chip, you try to place only standard cell where you need not to do all, you know, shape change, etc. But in the semi-custom design, you will also have few logic blocks which is of your own. Say for example, once again let us go for say parallel adder design, 4 bit parallel adder design. For designing 4 bit parallel adder, you need 4 full adders, 1 bit full adders, correct? See these one bit full adders say they are already designed and saved in the library. Now what is your job to design a parallel adder? You have to collect them back from the library or recall from the library. You have to interconnect them so that it starts behaving as a 4 bit adder, correct? That one bit full adder is already characterized. It is already available to you. But 4 bit adder you are designing. So there is a difference between semi custom design. If it is a full custom, I mean and the full custom design, if it is a full custom design, this full ladder is also designed by you. Each and every part of the design is designed by you. Then it is your job to give a particular shape to a logic block. Why if you look at uh, the uh, representation, mostly it is a rectangular in shape, you can go for square shape as well. But why uh, we follow such shapes? You can go for L shape also in the corner. You can have T shaped logic block also. This is for the area utilization. Say suppose if M mu is having a triangular shape and IU is also having a triangular shape and what is the area left in between that will be a waste in the chip to uh, you know avoid such waste regions or unutilized regions in the on the chip we try to give uh, either square shape or a rectangular shape or L shape or a T shape so that area utilization in the chip is maximum. Okay, let us move further. So, it is a formal definition, uh, it is a plan to uh, give position, position in the sense in the chip area where say this particular block to be placed. Well, if you look at the red color block, it does not have any shape. So, you will give a proper shape to it, a rectangular shape and you will place it or allot a particular region on a chip. This region when you are allotting, it is not just okay, I want, I wish to allot uh, this block, this particular region, okay. There are certain constraints. For example, say one of these blocks, say this blue color blocks, okay, is, a, is an oscillator. Oscillator means what? The module which generates a clock, which oper uh, that will be a system, I mean uh, that clock, fre at clock, that clock frequency, we call it as a system clock, that clock frequency, all other logic blocks or few of the logic blocks should work, correct? But now the major uh, problem with the such, I mean uh, oscillate, placement of oscillator block is like where to place it. 
because clock should reach to all the logic blocks at the same time or at least in the comparable time so that you can avoid clock skew, correct. So now it is always better to place it at the center or at the corner it depends on what are uh, placed around uh, the, that particular oscillator block. So it is not a randomized placement of any block onto the chip, it is like what is its functionality, how it is interconnected to all other blocks based on which only we can decide where, where uh, that particular block to be placed. According to this uh, example, red color block, logic block is placed somewhere here, blue color, look at this blue color blocks. Red and blue are connected by an interconnect. So, since they are connected, you try to place them close to each other. They are placed close to each other. All these, you know, you have to analyze. Like how to analyze? Definitely based on certain algorithms, certain methods and the modernized tools, what we call as a EDA tool, electronic design automation tool. They can handle all such conditions by their own. They are all very intelligent nowadays. Like they will do their job by based on certain algorithm. You need not to manually do. But manual designing is also there. But it is not always the manual designing. So why we have to do this? The floor planning? Obviously, I have to increase the circuit performance. Whenever it is a performance, students always believe me, you have to look at the speed. Okay. Then the chip area I have to optimize because in the specification says, say 10 mm cross 10 mm is the chip area. I have to design a chip within that area, right? Okay. Then the total wire length. What is the critical path length? What is the, you know, time span of a critical path length? That has to be, longest path has to be reduced in terms of time. Delay of the critical path. The critical path is very important for the design, it is the longest path. A delay in the longest path is once again it will uh, be, you know, with respect to time it will be once again prolonged, the operation will be prolonged. So I have to take care of that. Then the routability, I was mentioning about uh, the routing part of uh, uh, play, placed blocks in the previous example. You cannot have zigzag connection, etc. I have to look at how best way I can route two blocks. Then other conditions like I have to reduce the noise, heat dissipation. Say heat dissipation for example, say you have a power block. I mean say a particular block which is operating at high power, okay. And neighboring to that, uh, I, surrounding that you have few blocks where you know the power up, uh, up, you know consumption or dissipation rather it is a dissipation is moderate. So what will happen you know uh, the block where the power dissipation is maximum the chip region, region at that particular chip region the heat will be more compared to other. You might have seen I would have used integrated circuit for your third semester say uh, digital circuit lab right. You might have observed the heat generation or you can uh, you know you can feel that uh, heat correct when you touch it. So that has to be avoided. So I can even consider such, uh, you know, consideration while, uh, you know, allotting a particular, uh, you know, region. So the main goals, I think I have introduced enough. Now is that it's, uh, it's known that what should be the goals? Arrange the blocks on the chip. That's a primary goal anyways. Decide the location of I.O. pads. Yes, we have to do chip planning, so I have to do that. Decide the location and number of power pads, okay. I.O. it is not just I.O. Power means what? It will have VDD connection, it will have ground connection, we call as VSS connection. Decide the type of power distribution, okay. I just now I was mentioning about uh, the, you know, uh, power dissipation. Now, what is a network in which power is routed? That has to be known. You know, that has to be optimized in the sense that should be perfect. Decide the location and type of clock distribution. Again, that problem to avoid clock skew. So, I have to, you know, have clock distribution in a way that clock arrival time difference is minimum between the blocks. 
The main objectives of floor planning is to minimize chip area or minimize the delay. See at this stage only two part you can look at either you reduce the chip, entire chip area or you reduce the delay. So, the uh, you know you cannot just to design a chip for a lesser area like you cannot keep only area as a constant and say okay delay could be maximum that is not actually the meaning either uh, power, uh, you know chip area or the length or wire length it is a compromise or a trade off between the chip area and the wire length but there are certain algorithms you know they are more focused on the wire length and considering uh, you know chip area as a constraint So, what are the available floor planning inputs? So, at this stage you know you will be knowing how many blocks we have. So, how do we know for example? Say when you look at the net list, you can see it something like this. I can call it as a registered transfer level logic or RTL circuit or registered transfer level circuit okay not logic. So, this type of design is seen at the end of front end design after synthesis. So, this particular design is having a technology associated that means if I have one AND gate students if I have an AND gate this AND gate is operating for a particular technology like 180 nanometer, 45 nanometer or a 90 nanometer okay, or 33 nanometer kind of thing. Okay. So, since I know all the logic blocks, I know how many you know logic devices are there in the design. So, each AND gate or an AND gate need not be a logic block. So, put together I can have this as one logic block, this as another logic block. So, set of logic blocks are already known when we arrive at a floor planning stage. Terminals of each block, yes of course, I have a logic block, I know what is it a terminal like it has got say some three inputs, it has got only one output. If you look at the second logic block three inputs, it has got it has got one output here okay let me add in one more output here two outputs. So, I know how many inputs and how many outputs how they are interconnected. So, now logic block 1 is interconnected to logic block 2. So, between them you have three interconnects. So, if I look at this as only as a block. So, there are three interconnects between logic block 1 and logic block 2. Correct. So, this information I know and the interconnection information I can once again get from the net list. Next the power requirements of So, I know the power requirements of each block whether it is operating at a high power mode or a low power mode or if entire design is a low power design etcetera. Then the timing constraint. So, I have a logic block 1 what is the total timing left by that block and in between I have three wires connected. What is the timing of these three wires? What is the okay, timing budget? See I may not be knowing what exactly is the timing because I have not done interconnects yet. But what is the timing budget of these interconnects? All these information I should know. Then the physical partitioning of the information or interconnect, it is a interconnect information okay. Interconnect information, 
So, how it is partitioned? So, if it is partitioned like how sub blocks are made, how many logic block in a sub block? Then what is the size of die? So, die size on a wafer, it is it comes for the fabrication ok. On a wafer, this is how we represent wafer while uh, which goes for a fabrication. When it goes for a fabrication, this is called as a die. What is the size of a die? Because each die is diced as, a in, as an individual chip, okay. What is the size of that die? Then the IO placement, see it is, we have to do chip planning, so IO placement, positioning. They have written it as optional, that means what possible location of IOs should be known, if not it can be known while placing. Then the macro placement, what does it mean? Already standard cells will be there, if you have a semi custom design, standard cells are there, ok. They are already ready to be placed because their locations are fixed at on the top few layers of the chip, ok. So, the outcome of the uh, floor planning, you will get to know what is the die area requirement or the area of each block. IOs are all placed, macros are all placed, power grid is already designed, power pre-routing is also done. So, let me brief it again. See, if I take this as a chip, ok. See, this is the area in which I place a particular block, say block number 1 and this is the area I place a block number 2, ok. In between you have some horizontal tracks, ok. In the horizontal tracks, say I dedicate one particular track, track only for routing VDD, another track I dedicate only for routing VSS. All these arrangements are done by the end of you know floor planning. How to tap the power and what is the way in which, what is the topology in which the power lines are routed, all these will be analyzed. Then the standard cell placement areas, again in the chip area, if it is a semi custom chip, first few blocks are, I mean uh, in a region is given only for standard cell placement, the design ready for standard cell placement, ok. So, now I have mentioned already that there are only two uh, parameters, either you reduce the area or you reduce the you know delay. So, based on that the two phases of floor planning now, it has got two objectives minimum white space objective that means there should not be any vacant space left on a chip. Another one is minimum wire length objectives. So, you will have a great uh, trade off between them so that your design is optimized, but we can look at the you know minimum uh, say wire length objective first, then we let us come back to the white space objectives. So, there is some analysis. See, when it is a chip, say chip, uh, it looks something like this. There is an interconnect, say this particular interconnect. This particular interconnect has got three, I mean two tapping point. So, this particular interconnect is having a fan out of two. If you look at this particular interconnect, it has got a fan out of three. So, you know, when it is, a, see even if it is a gate, say you have a NAND gate for example, to that identical loads are connected. How many identical loads are connected? Say around 3 identical loads are connected, then the fan out is 3, ok. That is based on current rating and all, right. So, here the fan out is almost the same like how many in the single interconnect, how many nodes are connected. 
as number of fanodes are increasing what will happen you know the associated capacitance will also increase capacitance in a wire will increase when a capacitance in a wire increases what is a delay delay is proportional to tau the time constant tau is proportional to rc or cr okay 0.69 times of cr kind okay so it is proportional right delay will automatically increase so this particular plot is uh, you know showing how you know uh, the fan out is causing additional capacitance like fan out 2 has got a capacitance of 1.2 some unit picofarad 1.9 picofarad and so on right that is for say around 20 nits so this particular plot the number of nets with respect to the fan out okay so this uh, you know this is very important for the floor planning because i have to assess like uh, if i place a particular set of blocks close to each other what will be the fan out and what is the wire uh, total wire delay added that has to be analyzed so this plot is all about that so now how to calculate such delay but well, this is very hard right how to calculate the delay because simulation environment in the front end design it was totally different now i am doing i am performing floor planning uh, my chip design is not yet done but still i have to know what is a delay for that we can do some delay estimation so one of the methods for delay estimation is the elmore's delay constant based on uh, elmore's delay constant uh, we can calculate what is the total uh, delay so we call such modeling uh, is uh, approximation or in you know, a estimation as elmore's delay model see any interconnect if you look at it will you can see this kind of circuit right you have say a particular net it has got a node number 1 node number 2 here 3 here and 4 it has got four nodes so it is of having a fan out of four sorry five nodes so it is having a fan out of uh, you know five so now how to calculate delay uh, these two equations is actually based on elmos delay model say for example at t4 if i have to calculate t4 delay at this particular node okay t4 means delay at this particular node and t3 means delay at this particular node how to calculate you start from here the charging happens from this input right r1 into c1 then the same current should even charge c2 also so it is taking from where the current passes through r1 so r1 into r1 then it will go through r2 r1 plus r2 into c2 then r1 plus r2 plus r3 in the path okay r1 plus r2 plus r3 times of c3 and so on okay this is how this is how we have to calculate and you will may wonder why this is taken because this is not in the path even if this is not in the path this c4 see when it comes to this particular node the current won't distinguish i have to see only v3 part right v out 3 part for for the current c4 and c2 both are same so it will even try to charge c4 due to that you know delay will increase so that's why this is considered into picture so this is you know we have to it's 0 0.69 uh, it's so you can ignore that value it's a point signal R, uh, point 0.69 rc is actually the delay okay so if you look at the worst case delay see what we believe technology is enhancing say we are going from 180 nanometer 90 nanometer okay 180 nanometer to 90 nanometer from there to say 45 nanometer it's actually some 62 nanometer or kind of thing i think you know the scaling scaling is like every time how much you know 
dimension should be reduced. There is a scaling for that. Okay. So, it will be reduced by root 2. Every time say 180 by root 2, you will have a particular technology around 130 something. By root 2, you will have close to 90. So, after 180, it is not exactly the 90 nanometer technology. In between also, you had some technology. Okay. From 90 divided by root 2, you will get into some value. That divided by root 2 close to 45. Okay. This is how like technology will be decided. So, when you have the miniaturization of technology, we believe that okay, transistor size is reducing. So, chip size is reducing. No. We are keeping the chip size constant. We are reducing transistor size. That means what? More and more transistors can be added. So, only we can add more and more functionality. So, uh, when the transistor in the same chip area, when the feature size is reduced, you can put more functionality, right? So, since more functionalities are put, even if you know transistor size is reducing, uh, delay is not reducing, delay is increasing. So, we, we believe that see, since the chips, uh, feature size is reducing, the plot should go something like this, but it won't happen. You know, delay will try to increase because wire load capacitance is increasing. Okay. Average, uh, if you take on an average in the entire chip, if you are taking average, if you are taking, we we feel that, okay, overall, uh, you know, load capacitance, wire load capacitance is decreased, but individually, if you take wire load capacitance is increasing, even uh, the transistor feature size is reduced. Now, uh, the previous, up to previous slide, I was uh, explaining about the minimum wire length constraints. So, it is very, you know, brief introduction about the, uh, you know, wire length constraints. There are many other parameters also we have to consider. So, if you look at the my minimum white space objectives. So, this is how say you have, you know, block placement. This means this is not the block, the region which in which block 1 needs to be placed, region in which block 2 to be placed. See, for this problem, I can have multiple solutions, right? Look at this. This is one way of floor planning where the total area is 440, ignoring the unit, okay? This is an, for the same problem, another uh, chip planning, where uh, sorry, floor planning where the area is 380. So, that means there is uh, trial and uh, it is not it, iterative improvement that uh, you can, you know, further improve the utilization of uh, chip area from say stage 1 to stage 2, there is an improvement. See, when you look at uh, this particular, you know, image, this is the actual floor plan generated by some uh, tool. Now, look at this. A and C, they are the standard cells. They are already placed, okay. Look at the interconnection between uh, A and C and look at the, if I look at it as a block, I think it looks normal, but if I look at it as an interconnect, look at the interconnectivity, this is very hard to route. The, so, this particular picture, it is an initial floor planning that has to be, you know, optimized so that, you know, in the uh, diagram D, some optimization is done, some perturbation in the placement, see D out block, it is here in this particular example, but D out block is here in this particular example. So, some optimization is done so that, you know, you can see some improvement in the interconnects uh, topology, correct? So, this is once again the explanation of the same example what is stated. So, now uh, another part is like the congestion. So, interconnects are so massive that in one area they be very massive like there are more number of interconnects and another area there are very you know very few interconnects. So, that becomes you know there is no uniformity in the interconnects planning correct. 
So, based on the congestions, uh, you, I can say 200 percent congestion, 100 percent congestion, 50 percent conge congestion, there are three categories in this particular example it is taken. So, this particular example if you see A is placed here, E is placed here, B here, C here, but look at this particular part where the interconnected congestion is 200 percent. But for the same design with the proper planning if you look at, you know, with the proper planning in the sense for the initial uh, design you know, uh, uh, the size of the die is taken in the ratio of 2 is to 1.5. Then the uh, placement is altered for the chip ratio, ratio is 1 is to 1 that means width unit 1 and height is also unit 1. So, trial floor plan for 2 is to 1.5 is given, 1 is to 1 is also given for the, but if you note that though you know uh, the chip size is reduced, there is no 100 percent, 200 percent congestion part seen in the D example. Now the next part is, see since the congestion is introduced, it is a high time to introduce a channel. So, chip block is taken or a chip is taken, in the chip say let me be very simple with you all, I will let me take only 4 blocks. If I take 4 blocks, how I can perform interconnections? Okay. Since I already introduced about the congestion, it is a high time for me to introduce a channel definition or channels. So, let me take a chip area, under that area I am taking only 4 blocks. When there are only 4 blocks, how to do the interconnection between them? Say block 1 pin of block number 1 is connected to a pin in the block number 4, I have to perform some sort of interconnections. How to do interconnections? So, now interconnections can be taken in the horizontal area, we call it as a horizontal channel, we call it as a horizontal channel or it can be performed in the vertical area, it is called as a vertical channel. Horizontal channel and vertical channel. Typically for horizontal channel, we take a metal type 1, say M1 layer. Uh, if you have simulated any layout experiment using say cadence or any of the layout simulation, you will get an option to select whether it is a metal 1 layer or a metal 2 layer. Okay? So, metal 1 if I am taking for a horizontal and uh, track or a channel and metal 2 I am taking for a vertical channel, I call it as a HV model, HV routing model. Okay? HV, horizontal vertical routing model. So, in this particular example, in the channel a particular vertical, sorry horizontal model is shown where M1 layer is utilized for you know horizontal track. So, track in the sense say if I take this diagram, say this is a horizontal region you will have a track. Track is something like a reference. On top of it, metallization will be done so that you know 
you can uh, complete the connectivity. Okay, wherever is required, you will do the metallization. And two tracks will be always dedicated, two to three tracks will be always dedicated. One is for the VSS, one is for the VDD, another one is for the say clock. They are all dedicated. The leftover, you know, tracks will be utilized for routing the nets. There comes the congestion. So, in the net area, you know, in the horizontal channel, say you want to route around 10 nets. Say between block number 1 and 3, I have to route 10 nets, but available tracks are only 3. Then there comes a congestion, how to route them, correct? So, this particular picture is all about, you know, uh, routing region definition because when you perform floor planning, you have to consider that else you like you freeze the floor planning and by the end of the floor planning, you will not be able to route it. That is a problem. So, now to you know to you know help routing. So, there are many types of floor planning techniques. In the floor planning techniques, you know, like you divide the entire chip area into sub areas, which is completely of slicing type. That means you can partition them independent of each other. So, if you look at uh, this particular example, say in the B, you can partition it using a horizontal cut first. So, it will divide into two parts. Then the second part I can partition completely into two, like based on a vertical, then a horizontal, then a horizontal, correct? So, this is called as a slicing floor plan. You can have non-slicing also. So, this slicing floor plan, how do we represent? We can represent it in terms of a tree, okay? How slicing is done? The slicing uh, tree will depict the type of floor plan. So, we can visualize the floor plan with respect to slicing tree as well, okay. So, we represent a slicing tree and from, from slicing tree, I can even generate one more information which I call as say, let me take it to, take you to the example. For that, I call it as a polish expression of a slicing tree. If I know the polish expression, I can re, uh, write the si slicing tree and in turn I can write what is the floor plan. So, this will be done in the next class and thanks uh, for your patience hearing. So, I will stop this class today. So, with a brief introduction about all, all the topics covered, I will uh, take up the next session. Thank you.